Hello everyone, welcome to the first Petrosys webinar this year. This webinar is about Weltai. My name is Karina Harvey and I am a training and support geoscientist at Petrosys in our Glasgow office. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and uh, the recording will be available on our website very soon. So the agenda for today we will start from a short theory section and then we will move to live demo. In the theory section I would like to talk about uh, when to use Weltai. How does it work in Petrosys? And about different methods available for the user. So when should I use Weltai? Weltai is used to improve the accuracy of any grid when we have also point data available. So mainly it would be used for tying depth grids to formation tops at well locations, but also for example tying stacking velocity grids to known ve velocities at well locations or any attribute grids like porosity grids that have been derived seismically to actual values at well locations. Usually well tie is one of the last processes in a workflow. So how does well tie work in Petrosys? First of all the difference between the point value and the grid value is computed and then these values are gridded and this way we get the correction grid. So anytime when we do well tie in Petrosys we get two output grids. First is the tied output grid and uh, the other one is the correction grid. Tied output grid uh, is computed by adding the correction grid to the input grid. And there are also four me methods of uh, well tie in Petrosys that are available for the user, and the user can select one of those. So let's just go and uh, describe them all and have a look how they work. So the first one is the extrapolated method, and this is the default method of well tie in Petrosys. It makes grid correction over entire area of interest. And it's very good when you have a good spread of points. So if your points are spread evenly across the entire area of interest and there are no large areas without point control, for example, at the edges of the grid. So in a schematic drawing, we have our wells and we have uh, our control points here and a seismically derived grid. is line running somewhere here. And this method will uh, correct this grid over entire area of interest, so over all this entire area here. So it will run through all those points. What you need to be aware of uh, when you're using this uh, method is um, that sometimes away from the control points where you have areas where there is no, there are no control points, it can extrapolate to quite large values. So like over here you can see at the edges of this grid where there are no well control points, it will just go and extrapolate. If this happens to you, what you can do is uh, either to set the minimum and maximum value of correction and this way it will stop Petrosys or it will stop the algorithm from going into very large extrapolated values. If this still doesn't work and the grid doesn't look correct, then you can try the next method available, which is the distance method. The distance method incorporates zero edge into the gridding algorithm, and this helps to minimize the effects away from uh, control points, the edge effects. So. In the schematic drawing, we have our original grid here, and we will now set the distance from each well within which we would like to make the correction. So outside of those distances here, outside of those areas, there will be no correction added, so the grid will remain unchanged, whereas within those areas here, Petrosis will make a correction. Now the possible side effects here uh, can be, uh, as you can see on the, in the first uh, well here, um, that it can create large bullseyes effects, so isolated anomalies around wells. Uh, this can happen mainly when uh, there is a large correction needed to be added here and a very small distance around the wells where within which the algorithm has the, the area within which it can make a correction. So what we can do if it happens uh, to reduce those anomalies is to first of all specify a larger distance, so just uh, increase this distance around wells within which we would like to apply the correction. And if it still doesn't work then we can consider using the polygon method. The polygon method also incorporates a user-defined zero edge, uh, but it's up to, use, to the user to define this edge, and this is defined by a polygon, and it also can have non-zero value. 
So on a schematic drawing, again, uh, instead of having those uh, areas around each wheel, with the radius that we specify, we will now have polygon which specifies within which area we would like to make the correction. And this means that uh, the edges of this polygon may be in a difference, we may set a different distance uh, in different uh, directions. So for example from this well here to the left this distance is larger but from this well here to the right the distance is smaller. So outside of the polygon area there will be no correction added so there will be no changes to the grid. Whereas within this polygon area Petrosis will again apply the correction here. The method is very good uh, in a way that it allows user knowledge and input here. And the last method available is the filtering method. Filtering method is similar to the distance method in a way that it also incorporates zero edge here. The difference is that uh, the value of intermediate nodes between the correction edge and the input data point can be calculated using one of the three interpolation methods and it can be linear, square or cubic interpolation. So how does it work in the cross section here and in the schematic drawing again? Again we have distance specified from each well within which we would like to add, uh, apply the correction and again outside of those distances, outside of those areas um, the grid will remains unchanged so nothing changes here but this time we can specify the interpolation method between this point to which we want to tie uh, our grid to and, and the edge points here um, specified by the distance. So if we for example choose the linear interpolation method it will just fit lines here and connect those points with lines, straight lines. If we specify it to be square or cubic interpolation then we will get slightly different, more curved line through those wells here. There is a potential problem with this method. It can produce more pronounced bullseye effects and for this reason we do not recommend uh, this method unless it is specifically required by your data set. Okay so that's all the theory for today and let's go and see how it works live. So I've got here a data set for the Otway Basin. The data is the courtesy of the Primary Industries Victoria. And I have displayed untied depth grid for the top Umarala formation. With wells also here. I will use those wells to tie this grid, depth grid, to uh, the well locations here. So going to surface modeling. I have prepared a work row consisting of three tasks. The first task will use the well type using the extrapolated method, the second task the distance method and the last one the polygon method. To do well tie, go to grid, well tie. This is where we access it. Okay, so let's have a look into the first task, the extrapolated method. First of all, we can see that uh, there are two output grid created, the output tight grid and the correction grid. So we need to specify the names for those grids. And then we select our input grid, so this will be our depth converted to a time grid. We have chosen also well data, point data, and I'm just going to go to input data to show you the options here. So if I click on this button here and select wells, there are many sources available for me. So I can choose my wells to come from Petrel or from Kingdom from OpenWorks and from many other sources, I'm selecting Petrus's well data file here. One more option here, the point data can come also from Excel spreadsheet or from text file and from a spatial data, for example from a shape file. So there are lots of opportunities here and lots of options for the user. Then I'm going next to the methods tab and here I will choose one of the methods, the first method which is the default one, extrapolated method. And I'm also using faults. Faults can be used for the correction grid and output tight grid, for the correction grid only or for the output tight grid only. So I'm using it only in my output tight grid, not in the correction grid. 
and I've also chosen one of the fault files, Petros's fault files, but uh, you can also choose data from other sources, for example from Petrel or from Kingdom, from Openworks or from a shapefile, so there are options here as well. Now I'm clipping this grid to a polygon, so this is my two-way time extent, so uh, the original data extent, and I'm also turning on the reporting window, and here I've asked Petrosys to display a MSDA report while I'm running this task. So it will pop up as a separate window and it will show you the, the MSDA report. And I'm also saving it to the CSV file for future reference. So I'm not going to run this task just now. Just to save us time, I've run this task before and I would like to show you the results. So first of all, my MSDA report. This just pops up while I'm running the uh, well I task and it shows me all my input data. So all my wells here are well listed. And these come from my WDF file, but if you have chosen to use well data from Petrel or from other source, uh, they will be listed here from Petrel directory. And also it includes my Z value for each well, the Z value for untied grid, and the difference before we tied this grid, and then the Z value of the tied grid, and the difference after we've tied this grid. And the last column here is the correction. So the correction added to the input grid to create the output grid. So how much we have to correct this grid to uh, achieve our output tied grid. So if I sort this data now using the difference after, for example, it will show me that mostly my well tie went well. However, there's, for example, one well here, Wallaby Creek well, uh, where the difference uh, between the input data and the output tight grid is about 7 meters, which is higher, much higher than all the other ones, and I'm rather expecting it to be in the range of uh, between 0 and 1 values. So I can go now and uh, QC this well on my map, and if I zoom in over this cluster of wells here, this is my Wallaby Creek well. So we can see that it lies very close to another well, and this may produce such a massive difference because the well is very close to another well and for the algorithm there is very little room to tie it properly to the to the well point. So that's probably what caused such a difference here. The other option for QCing this data is by uh, having a look at the correction. So first of all we can see that the highest correction is for the curly well and it's over 600 meters, which is very high. So now we can also go back to the map, look for the curly well, and the curly well lies somewhere over here, so that's this well here, and uh, we can QC the input data, we can check if this well is maybe lying on a fault block, uh, maybe uh, the pick for this data has been erroneous, so we just need to check uh, our input grid, uh, sorry, our input data. So this is a very good QCing tool, um, the MSDA report. And if you need to see this report again, you can also use the saved version, the CSV version. Okay, so let's go back to my map and now see the results of the well tie here. So I want to show you first the correction grid. So this is the grid that has been created to correct my input grid and to, to tie it to my wells. Um, if you look at the color gradient here, you'll notice that those colors around pinkish colors, uh, they, um, or slightly bluish, um, darker bluish, um, they are uh, the very lowest co low corrections, so the lowest corrections, so about zero and uh, around zero. So there have been no correction added over here in the north of my grid. The largest correction is around my curly well here, which we know already from the MSTA report. And here, around uh, away from well control, in these areas here, or maybe farther towards the north, we can see that the algorithm starts slightly extrapolating. And in my case here, these extrapolated values aren't dramatically high. However, if you see on your uh, grid that this happens, so the, those extrapolated values are getting really large, what you can do is to either restrict those values, so come back to the surface modeling, go to the extrapolated method, and in the methods tab, specify the minimum and maximum value of correction you would like to add, or you can use a different method, and in this case it will be the distance method. So just to show you also the output tight grid, it looks really nice. Uh, I can see that there is really not so, such a large extrapolation here uh, at the edges of the grid, so um, for me it's acceptable. Okay, so now I'm going to go and uh, try the distance method. So here all my input data is the same, 
my two-way uh, two time depth converted grid and my input data points from WDF and in the methods tab I've chosen a distance method this time and I also specified the distance to be only 5000 meters so 5 kilometers which is very small in the scale of my input data range and, and, and the scale of my map and I've chosen this distance specifically to emphasize uh, the differences between this method and other methods so, so they are really clear and very strong and I also ran this task before so I'm just going to show you the results here First of all, the correction grid. So the correction grid shows us again that around those red values here, I mean red, sorry, <laughs> pink values here, uh, no correction has been added, so no changes have been made to my original grid. Whereas uh, closer to the wells, within a distance of, as I specified, around 5000 meters, we've added some correction here. And as you can see on those two wells very clearly, that's a very good example of how uh, we can create here uh, as isolated anomalies for this grid. So if we use this method and we specify the distance to be very small, but the correction is much larger than here uh, in my uh, situation, uh, then this can produce uh, bullseyes here around those wells. Uh, just to show you the output tight grid, looks still fine. There is a slight high here, but there is really not a massive anomaly, so it's still acceptable for me. So next, what happens if I if, if, if this uh, produces two large bullseyes, what I can do is to extend or increase this distance around the wells where I would like to apply correction, or I can use the polygon method. Now I'm just going to uh, use the polygon method first. Uh, first of all, I will show you the polygon that I created here for this purpose. So these are the three polygons in one polygon file. Uh, now this is very easy in Petrosys to create polygons using the spatial editor. If you would like some more information about it, please let us know at support or you can also have a look on our website and we have a very good video about how to create polygons within using the spatial editor. So I'm using those polygons here for my well tie. In the polygon method I'm using exactly the same input data again and in the methods tab I'm just changing the method to polygon and I'm selecting those uh, methods here. Uh, sorry, those polygons here. And the correction will be added only within the polygons here. So let's have a look at the correction grid again. And as you can see this has changed my uh, correction grid quite a lot uh, comparing to my distance correction grid. So this is very, very little area here around the wells where I could apply correction, whereas here this area is large and that allowed Petrosys to connect those points here. So they are not isolated anomalies now, but they are just connected here. And the same over here, it kind of connects those points, two points and the same over here. So it has changed uh, quite a lot uh, comparing to the distance method. But outside of those polygons, there is no correction added whatsoever. And just to have a look at the output type grid, so my final grid, it looks nice. Again, there are no anomalies here, uh, so the method worked fine. Okay, so uh, this is all I wanted to show you for today. And I'm just going to go back to the presentation and summarize what we learned today. So well tie is used to tie various types of grids to point data, so to match the grids to well points or to any point data. There are different methods available and these can be applied to provide best results for the data used. And we can also turn on MISTI report to pop up automatically when we are doing the well time petrosis. And this MISTI report together with the correction grid it constitutes a very powerful QCing tool. Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions there will be time uh, to answer them now. Thank you very much.